Hello, my name is Rosalind Price Cousins. I'm one of the business skills um, coordinators here at the Crafts Council. And I'm here today with Andy King, who is a furniture designer and maker and um, runs his own business, King and & Webbin. And he is going to be sharing his experience in setting up and running his craft business with us today. Um, so that will be really, really uh, interesting and exciting uh, for all of us, I think. Um, and also to say that Andy was one of our alumni and he was also on Hot House 2018. Um, so it's wonderful just to see how his business has developed since then and the journey he's been on. So I'm just going to stop sharing here and um, hand over to Andy and then um, at the end we'll have time for a few questions hopefully. So I'll, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> okay, hello, thanks for the intro Rosie. It's a uh... It's lovely to be here. Uh, really appreciate being asked. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, I was on uh, Hot House twenty eighteen, which was an amazing experience, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. And um, yeah, um, yeah. My business has, um, has definitely benefited from it. Um, so, yeah. I guess I just uh, talked through a bit about myself and the business and how it's gone over the last few years. Um, so, yeah. Um, so uh yeah that's me uh i've got much longer hair than that now I've got, um I've just grown it through lockdown so but yeah um i established um king of webin in 2017 uh yeah i'm a, a furniture designer maker as rosie said um and yeah we use natural hardwoods for kind of warmth and durability but uh, i really like to combine them with um innovative materials that kind of add texture and color to our work. Um, I'm really into uh, art deco, Danish modern and uh, Japanese aesthetics. So they kind of get uh, entwined and um, they're really big influences for me in our work. Um, and I like to use traditional woodworking skills, but then I'm also a big fan of, of modern technology, uh, like CNC routers are so useful for so many things. So always keen to incorporate that those kind of technologies into our work. Um, and I like to think our work is um, meticulous and crisp, but also kind of gently softened details. Um, and I like to think it sparks joy to a uh, sight and touch. Um, so my passion for woodwork uh, developed as a child. Um, my dad was a carpenter and was for, for his whole life. Uh, so I was always kind of tinkering away in his garage and. Uh, Used to help him at work when I was younger. Um, so yeah, I think that's where it, it started. Um, and then I've kind of taken various detours along the way, but um, yeah, it's all kind of come together now. And uh, yeah, so we, we kind of focus on designing and making furniture that's um, kind of as beautifully crafted as we can be, but then also with a kind of focus on being environmentally responsible. Um, yeah, so here's an example of some of our our work, we've got a few different ranges. Um, there's the hideout range, which is uh, kind of Danish modern inspired. Uh, it's kind of clean and, and simple. Um, um, there's the hideout table there and the uh, hideout chair. Um, and we've got another range called the lab range, which is actually inspired by, um, by old school furniture, old desks and lab stools, um, which I'm a big fan of. Um, and then there's also a range called the forms range, which is a bit more kind of, um, minimalist and, and art deco inspired. Um, so yeah, that's an example of the kind of pieces that are on the website right now, but there's also a whole lot of work that's kind of been made since, uh, freestanding pieces, which I, I'm, I'm yet to get on the website, which is on the to-do list. Uh, so yeah, there's more pieces in the hideout range. There's a desk, um, which I'm really proud of, and, and a TV unit there as well, uh, all kind of following a similar kind of design uh, language. Um, there's a, a Timmy desk, which again is a bit of a take on a, on a, on a school desk with double lift up lids, um, which is kind of a simple and functional piece, which is proven quite popular actually. We've made several of those now, uh, making one at the moment too. Um, there's a hideout bed, which um, is another great piece, again, which I'd, I'd love to sort of start making some of these for clients. Um, it's got enormous storage underneath, which kind of floats underneath. Um, so yeah, I'm really into kind of 
furniture that you can see through and, and things that are like they're floating just kind of creates a really nice sense of space. Um, but then, yeah, we also do lots of uh, kind of fitted uh, bespoke work. That's quite a large part of the business. Um, so this is the kitchen we made last year for a house in Bristol. Um, so yeah, really great to kind of apply the furniture making to, to this kind of work, which, which translates really, really well. Um, and so this was made in English ash and, and uh, a material called Durat, which is a bit of a fave of mine right now, which I'm gonna talk about a bit later too. Um, this is a, a current project we're working on, which is um, we have a, a client in Bath who've done loads of work for over the years, which is, which is great. Uh, he, he likes what we do and um, um, so, so we've done num a number of different rooms in his house um, and this is a huge kind of suspended desk that runs across the full width of a Georgian room and into the bay window this is kind of just the two ends you can see here um, but yes yeah, so this is a kind of an ongoing project which is um, which is really which is great been quite a challenging on this to work out how to make a four meter wide desk float um, Wardrobes and alcove units, this is actually for the, the same client in Bath. Um, there's, there's always lots of this kind of work and people can make a full-time career out of doing um, wardrobes and alcove units. And we've, we've done quite a lot as well now, so it's a, it's a nice thing to do. Um, there's a, kind of some fitted, fitted freestanding furniture in a way there um, with the hideout desk, which is kind of um, trying to create a minimalist desk that can fit into an alcove. Um, and again, it looks like it floats. Um, so that's kind of directly inspired from the freestanding version on the hideout range. And then, yeah, on the right there, there was a great um, extending dining table commission we had a couple of years ago, um, which, um, yeah, really challenging to make, but really proud of it. It, it kind of it opens out and turns into a big oval with this uh, kind of fold out butterfly extending. Uh, leaves in the middle so yeah really really happy with that one um yeah and we just recently finished our first um, um commercial project for a commercial client which has been um which has been great like a lot of work kind of a lot to learn um but uh yeah awesome projects and um we got to be involved in so many things like designing the typography for the the front of the building and the lettering for the lifts which was amazing um so it was all about um we had a brief to kind of create a whole series of pieces that uh, reference the science history um as a gin distillery amongst other things um so we developed a surface pattern and then pieces that all kind of were based on a, a theme that we developed um yeah the building just looks amazing it's like a just eye candy for photography um, and we had all these pieces we have all these pieces kind of arranged throughout the building and just so many great angles you can look at them from so um, yeah this has been a great one um, so yeah I guess um, as a as a business kind of our values that help guide us um, honesty um, in the way we make things and in the way they function um, and transparency. I'm not very good at lying, so um, uh, I just like to be really transparent and tell everyone exactly uh, what it is and how it is. And uh, yeah, there's just no one in, in not operating that way, I think. Um, just want to make sure everything is, is as high quality and as well made as we can make it, um, uh, kind of depending on the, the particular budget for a, a job, of course. Um, and I'm really kind of insistent that everyone's satisfied at the end. Uh, so far, no one's had a bad word to say. In fact, everyone's been overwhelmingly sat happy and, and, and enthusiastic, so that's great. And I just wanna make sure it stays that way. So um, I guess our sort of value proposition as a company is um, that we produce honest, transparent, long lasting furniture um, and bespoke design that hopefully exceeds people's expectations. So that's what we tried to aim for. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can just tell you a bit about how it's developed for me over the last, um, well, six years now. Um, so there wasn't really a business model to start with. Um, it was just kind of jumping in and seeing what happens. Um, so yeah, I completed a, I used to be a, a civil engineer, uh, well, an engineering geologist strictly, um, um, but um, kind of never, really loved doing that and I've always been into 
kind of more creative things of woodwork and skateboarding and um yeah just this all kind of um woodworking just seemed a way to bring together all the things I really like to do so um yeah I enrolled my, on a, uh, a furniture making course um just a three-month course actually but I kind of had a good sort of foundation from um working with my dad and uh, him just growing up around carpentry uh, so yeah after my course in 2015 I um uh, we, were, we, we moved to Bristol and I rented my first uh, bench space in a dark grotty workshop um and I almost worked for a um amazing cabinet makers in Bristol called Young and Norgate who just produced incredible work um but for some reason I was feeling the call to try and go my own way so um yeah so that's what I did and uh at the beginning I kind of made a mixture of um freestanding and fitted furniture um but just at the most ridiculously undervalued prices. I just didn't really have any idea of what, uh, what I didn't value, I guess, what I was doing because I didn't have the confidence. And um, so I've, I've, I've produced some great work, um, I, I believe, but um, people just got some bargains. I've, I've made a kitchen for someone and charged a fifth, probably even less than what it should have been worth. But at the time, I just didn't really have the confidence to, um, properly value the work I don't think um, and at the same time I was kind of freelancing for a, um, a maker in the workshop where I was renting space and uh, so that was great uh, you know I learned loads from him but um, yeah I was being exploited pay wise but it, but it was a it was a great learning experience um, and then I've kind of felt like I needed to do an exhibition in order to try and establish myself so I, I, I enrolled into um, London Design Fair 2017, which was my, my first one. Um, so yeah, I kind of went right into the big ones from the beginning for some reason. Um, and I kind of set about making a collection of furniture, um, which I spent months on, like way too many months on reflection. Um, and yeah, managed to build a website and get some photography and, and, and some branding with a lot of help from various people. Um, yeah, and established King of Webber uh, in 2016. Um, um, so yeah, managed to get everything made for the show and kind of planned a stand and set it all up and I was really happy with it. Um, yeah, the show felt like it went amazingly. I got so much great feedback and I thought I'd smashed it. I thought this is it. Um, so many great potential opportunities that came from it. So many great discussions. But as it turned out, um, all these kind of opportunities just gradually fizzled away and, and, and not a single job materialized but I don't regret doing it for a moment um met a lot of other makers and just a great experience so kind of after that I was kind of back to the 2015 to 2016 style of working um but just gradually bringing in more of my own work um via friends of friends and family of friends and friends um and also via a website called Howls, where I created a profile, which is kind of a bit like Pinterest, but for homeowners. So it's good for, yeah, you, you can actually find work there. It's, it's been really good for me, Howls. Um, but yeah, these these were hard days. Like cash flow was a nightmare. I had I was barely paying myself, if at all, and just uh, just stressing about not having enough work. So yeah. Um, then the following year undeterred by not actually getting any work from an exhibition, I decided to enroll in two more for some reason. Um, but I just felt like they were good things to do. Uh, so I enrolled into new designers uh, one year in, and then again for London Design Fair, um, which, um, which was great. Uh, and managed to get into both of those. Um, and again, yeah, designed and made more pieces for um, um, uh, my collection. Uh, which is where I kind of developed the hideout range, which is sort of something that's growing over the years. Um, and again, yeah, I got loads of amazing feedback, super happy with how everything went, loads of great discussions. Again, no jobs actually materialised from London Design Fair, but yeah, some did from new designers, which is great. Um, so I guess I was starting to realise that um, these shows don't, or, or in my experience, these shows didn't necessarily bring bucket loads of work, but um, it kind of got me to a point where I, I was on people's radar and I was sort of building connections and starting to have a bit of a profile. But it just, 
it just takes time and yeah that's kind of a theme that uh, i'll come back to again and again um but um yeah again great experiences at those shows and uh, yeah some some great projects that did result from uh, new designers um and then yeah i applied to hot house because i just um kind of been admiring other makers that had been on it and thought i really wanted to be i could really benefit from it so i applied and i got accepted which i was super stoked about um and yeah actually hot house was a chance to just meet some brilliant people and actually develop a you know to sit down and think about a business model which is not something i'd really done up until that point um so while i was doing hot house i moved into a new workshop in bristol which was just just uh, so much better than the old one just filled with natural light really great equipment and a shared workspace with some other great makers um so that was awesome um so yeah things were starting to get a lot better in 2018 and uh yeah the science museum lab still projects um which happened as a result of someone i met at new designers that kind of um actually happened uh, and, and got stocked into the science museum uh, and there was loads of great press as a result of that um not necessarily loads of sales but the press was was worth it in itself so and then yeah during this year i also did some great commissions via an interior designer i met at new designers uh, work was coming in via house and also some projects coming in via Instagram. So yeah, it felt like things were starting to, starting to fall into, into place. And um, yeah, the pay and the cash flow situation was sort of incrementally, slowly, but inc incrementally in, improving. And I was actually starting to develop um, kind of a, an order book, a, a pipeline of work, which is just uh, amazing. And to the point where I, I needed help. So uh, I managed to find a, a lovely chap named Bill, who, who started helping me, um, who, who'd kind of done a, a, a three month course himself and was young and enthusiastic. Uh, so he's, yeah, he started working for me part time. And now he's full time. And uh, yeah, I couldn't manage without him. Uh, so yeah, 2019 to 2020, it was a it was a busy start to the year, which is always amazing, because Christmas is a pretty nerve wracking time as a uh, running your own business, if there's nothing booked in for the start of the year it doesn't make for a fun Christmas so um I had yeah work to start the year which is great and uh sort of some larger scale jobs in the pipeline including the, the uh first commercial project which is the one I showed you earlier um so yeah things were looking good but then obviously coronavirus hit and um so I thought this was going to be a problem um for the business but um actually there was just a brief hiatus just literally a week or two and then um everything just kind of kicked off and went up a notch, which was amazing. Uh, it seems like our kind of sector um, in general has just been so busy through uh, the pandemic, which um, is, is obviously very fortunate for our, for our sector. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, the commercial project was go and there was a lot of design work involved in that. But then at the same time, we were doing fitted work and uh, desks, desks have been a theme of, uh, lockdown with people working from home so managed to make several desks a few of the new timmy desks that i showed you earlier and then i also had some um x display display pieces from um uh the various exhibitions that i'd done and um some of which were desks so um i actually set up an ebay shop and um had quite a lot of sales through that which was which is yeah, another great thing um uh yeah we did quite a few bespoke tables guys kind of people were just investing in that or have been investing in their homes more we even had uh direct sales on the website which is um up until this point something that hadn't really happened um so i'm, I'm always blown away when i open my inbox and there's a, an order for a piece it's just uh, the loveliest thing to see um so yeah and and this year um yeah we're just we're just well, from the start of 2020, we were booked up for several months, which is just amazing. Uh, we're currently booked up until September with projects, which uh, again, is just so, so awesome. Um, and there's lots of other potential jobs in discussion. Um, after that, I find that I'm kind of looking many more months ahead than I used to uh, now. Uh, and 
that kind of brings new stresses actually having almost too much work to uh, to deal with but that's obviously the way around you want it um and that yeah there's some kind of exciting collabs that have been brewing in the background which hopefully will come to light soon um so yeah i think now is the point where actually with a kind of a pipeline of work and um uh someone working for me full time uh, and now is kind of the time where i want to sort of revisit the the business model model that uh, I developed during Hot House, and just kind of measure where I am against that. And obviously, it's kind of a moving target, and it constantly evolves. But um, yeah, it's um, with 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 it being busier, you can almost see that you know sometimes you're kind of being steered in directions rather than you steering where you want to go. So it's a bit of a balancing act. But um, yeah, things are things are going well right now, which is great. So um, I guess if um, Looking at the kind of income streams that we have uh, as a, a business, it's um, at the moment. So the the chart on the on the left there, probably about over half or just over half the work we do is um, bespoke fitted furniture. So projects like the, the the big long fitted desk and the the wardrobes and the alcove units and uh, a lot of storage. Um, um, yeah which are they're, they're great projects um they're, they're, they're time consuming but they're good uh they yeah they're good financially those projects um probably do about 20 percent of kind of bespoke freestanding furniture so by that i mean um kind of bespoke versions of our um pieces that are in our range so extending versions of tables or different colors and sizes of, of tables or desks uh, so yeah, those are those are great projects. Um, not a, quite a small proportion of web sales, which is something I'd like to increase kind of going forward. Um, yeah, some commercial work, um, which was that that one large project that I I showed you, and then yeah, just a very small portion of kind of other sort of income streams, which is public speaking, something like this, uh, which I actually had quite a few lined up. Um, pre-pandemic but then obviously that that all changed um so that's something i'd quite like to do more just because it's great to um just great for your own confidence and, and developing networks and just being in the room talking to people well when we can get back in the room um and it actually kind of forces you to, to look at your business when you're presenting uh, you know coming up with a presentation as to how your business is doing um so yeah the chart on the right there is kind of where um i'd like to the kind of the breakdown i'd like to see kind of moving on a bit um i'd kind of like to uh, actually reduce the amount of bespoke fitted furniture we do because um while, while they're good projects they're, they're they are very time consuming and uh, it's sometimes quite hard to to uh, assess how much time you're going to spend on them um and there can be a bit of a creep in the scope and because you're making everything for the first time there's often a lot of inefficiency in the design and making and there's, there's unforeseen challenges um, so it'd be quite nice to sort of make that a slightly smaller part of the business um, and then while making that smaller making other parts bigger so kind of having kind of pushing for more um, of our bespoke free standing furniture so more versions of, of the pieces we produce um, I'd really like to to make web sales a, a bigger part of our business just because it's um it's really efficient to produce batches of furniture um and then we can create stock and then if we can kind of market that and, and um try and get more eyes on the website to to uh try and increase sales that would be amazing actually i'd really like to do that um and then yeah it'd be great to keep up with some of the commercial projects um yeah and and do a bit more public speaking or more kind of presenting would be great uh so that's kind of where we we want to go in the sort of short term and then again we'll just revisit this and it's just something that's constantly keep looking at as as things progress really um there's some there's some exciting collabs that have kind of been brewing for a while now this is an amazing uh tattoo artist that we've been in discussion with uh about doing some kind of pieces that feature some of his artwork is something I've always really been into is is trying to have a service pattern and, and art on on our furniture um, and 
yeah this this man shares our, our our passion for it so yeah we're kind of yeah we've got some ideas which uh hopefully we'll be able to to announce some pieces soon so that's really exciting um, and another thing i've always kind of wanted to do for the website is to have the facility for people to build their own effectively so if you go onto um the nike website they have this thing called nike id where you can basically build your own sneakers uh, you can you know choose the color of the sole and the all the various parts of the of the sneaker to create your own and i'd really like to have uh, an area of the website where certain products can be customized in the same way and it would just work really well with our lab stores where you could change colors and colors of bolts and, and materials um, um, for the seats and colors for the seats uh, and yeah we've started using uh, Durat for the seats which is this amazing material from Finland which is a kind of a really environmentally responsible solid surface material that has all these really cool uh, colored kind of terrazzo flex in which are recycled plastic uh, so I'm, yeah really keen to try and use that more particularly for these stools and there's, there's been some good feedback so far um, so yeah um, and then yeah some tips and these are kind of for myself uh, as well as for anyone else that is interested um, I kind of review these every now and again because there, there's definitely things I need to keep on top of as well. But um, yeah, photos, if you, you're kind of holding yourself back, you're holding your business back if you don't have decent photos. Um, and at the beginning, a photo shoot is kind of eye-wateringly expensive and unaffordable. But if you can somehow scrape together uh, a way to do it, then it's just so useful getting pro proper professional images of your work um, because they just kind of what you're judged on everyone sees our, our, our images online and they need to be good um because people just judge things in a second so um yeah that would be a really top tip of mine um yeah meetings um it's kind of harder now but um getting out of the workshop and talking to people face to face is uh it's just invaluable it's kind of easy to hide it hide behind the workbench but um uh just meetings whether you're trying to arrange them or or just any way you can meet up with people is just a great thing to do um and, and that kind of leads on to networking which is like a, a term i really hate but um uh it, it works um they're kind of awkward but um the more you can network um and that doesn't necessarily mean going to horrible networking events but just kind of speaking to as many people as you can just a great way to hear of new opportunities and and if you're at an exhibition say and you see someone that you you know or admire or think you could work with then just then approach them and don't let them walk by because it's yeah don't let opportunity walk past you is, is an expression i've heard a lot um yeah cash flow for for me as a furniture maker um i have really high overheads um and material costs are really high so there's kind of lots of money going out 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 all the time um so I find I have to watch cash flow like a hawk. Um, so I have a spreadsheet and just kind of look at it every few days um, just so I don't end up getting in trouble. Um, and this is, a, this is one I really need to take note of myself, but being organized and recording your time, uh, specifically with kind of longer projects where um, uh, you've got a lot of costs and uh, there's a lot of time costs and it's kind of very easy for things to to, to drag on and the budget just gets blown to smithereens and I've, I've had a few of these and um, um, you've got to kind of be a bit militant with yourself to try and make sure you're sticking to your budget um, but yeah I'm still I need to practice what I preach it um, yeah listening to podcasts I always find um, I really enjoy listening to podcasts whenever I, I can particularly on car journeys uh, or if I'm out in the van delivering or on the way to install something um, uh, and there's a few I'm, I'm really into and they just kind of keep up kind of levels of stoke if you're if you're feeling a bit low and because it's a real roller coaster doing doing this job so uh, it's just good to to hear from people who are in a similar boat and uh, uh, it just kind of just kind of keeps me pepped up um yeah if you're trying to develop your kind of signature work in the background um it's really hard to do so if you're busy so I, I, I always try to have in mind just to work on little even if it's like an hour here and there to work on progressing a new piece and eventually it will, it will get done. Um, Cause there's always new pieces I want to make. Um, yeah. 
learn to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's, it, running your own business is quite uncomfortable a lot of the time, whether it's financially or, or um, um, the stress of delivering work or not having the work to deliver or um, generally feeling a lot of discomfort. But I've kind of learned that you just need to become comfortable with being dis uncomfortable. It's uh, sort of managing your level of discomfort. Um, and after a while, you find like the big worries are not really such big worries and there's always new things to worry about. So you just kind of have to just learn to manage the discomfort. And I think if you're not feeling uncomfortable, you, you're probably not progressing quite as much as you need to. You always kind of need a certain level of discomfort. Um, I've heard this expression, this expression a lot, which is plant as many flags as you can, but I, I really like it because it just means if you've got a piece of work in a, in a gallery or a piece of content online or um, something in a shop or a, a piece in a window, anything, it's just, it's just a little flag kind of waving your, your business name and uh, trying to get the word out there for you. It's, it's, it's kind of working without you doing anything. So I think planting as many flags as you can is, is a great idea. Um, this is a great one. Don't, don't, I've heard this a lot and it's so true. Uh, comparison is the death of joy, I think it is. But yeah, don't compare yourself to, don't compare where you're at to someone else where they're at. You're, you're, you could be at the beginning and they could be, have done it, been doing it for years and you just can't compare your various stages. Um, and, and if you see someone doing really well, don't kind of begrudge them. I've, I've been guilty of this in the past. Um, they're doing really well because they're doing everything right. And uh, so it's kind of good to like aspire to those people rather than kind of envy them. Um, yeah, and I've tried to do that. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself, but uh, yeah, it's a great thing to just sort of, just to try and almost emulate them rather than uh, envy them. Um, and, and in that way, kind of be proud of, of yourself and what you've done. Um, and, and if you just kind of consistently doing what you're doing, the time and the consistency should equal success. And um, it doesn't happen overnight. There's no such thing. And if everyone was doing this, it, if everyone, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So yeah, it's, um, it just takes time and patience. Um, so yeah, kind of looking back on, on, on my business over the last six years, it's, um, yeah, it's taken me six years to get to where I am now. Um, uh, which is kind of a long time, but then I guess I think six years ago, King and Webin didn't exist. And now I've kind of got freestanding furniture in homes all over the world, in New Zealand, in Canada, uh, in America, New York, California, which is kind of blows my mind. Um, I've got freestanding and fitted furniture in, in homes across the UK, uh, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, and my work is public art in a, a big commercial development in Bristol, which, uh, Again, just uh, I find amazing considering this business didn't exist a few years ago. So yeah, just uh, hang on in there, and it will, it will, it will happen. So yeah, thank you very much. Hi. Oh, thank you so much. That Hi, was Robbie. Great. <laughs> Such brilliant advice and it's so wonderful to see that you you did really well last year in a pandemic I mean yeah I know it's um yeah I, I was kind of pretty nervous at the beginning uh because obviously some it's been it's been awful for some areas hasn't it but for our kind of sector in general everyone I know all my kind of maker friends have just been just been kind of flat out really so I guess people are just investing in their homes right now and they haven't a lot of people are kind of still for, for a lot of people who are still working normally but from home they've still got their normal income and they're probably if anything got a bit more disposable income so and they're looking looking at their home and where they can improve so yeah for our sector it's been a bit of a it, it's, it's 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 been good yeah we've been fortunate so yeah that's fantastic, isn't it? And I love the kind of little bespoke desks that fit into alcoves. And I can, yeah. I can I understand why they're really popular at the moment. And yeah. probably going on, you know, people are going to be working more from home going on from here. So, yeah, um, definitely. I was kind of thinking, is this a bit of a, um, an artificial uh, spike? But I think, you know, it's here to stay, isn't it? Home working. So I think, um, I think it's going to be a real boost for our, our kind of, for the designer maker 
um, which is which is good for us. So <laughs> yeah. it is. It's good for something good to come out, definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, and that kind of leads me on to um, one of my first questions, kind of now you're a, a business um, owner, I was just wondering what kind of things you really enjoyed about that and what things you you really don't enjoy, you kind of like the least and put off doing and because um, it, it is difficult, isn't it, kind of running things and, and being your own boss? Yeah, it, it really is. Um, it's kind of being your own boss is, is, the, is the best thing, but it's also the most challenging thing ever yeah if you're not um you're not sort of constantly driving and pushing nothing happens uh, and so it's amazing to think that you can you can create you're kind of in this position where you can create anything you want yeah uh, which is really exciting but then at the same time you've got to balance that with um bringing in enough income to support to pay for your business your overheads to pay for your to try and pay yourself and then to try and support your your home or your family so um it's really exciting and it's really nerve-wracking at the same time uh um and I, I kind of i thought i used to work really hard in my old job when i when i was an engineer uh but compared to that it's i work so much harder now but but it's amazing it's it's the first time i've ever i've ever been able to say i, I love what i do so it's it's completely worth it um and and when you're having a moment where you're kind of stressing out about I can't I can't do everything I can't do the accounts I can't design I can't make I can't uh, maintain the workshop or or um, when you're having a stress but then when you when you finish a new piece of work and you deliver it and the clients over the moon and you're over the moon then it's all becomes totally worth it again so yeah it's um it's a roller coaster, but I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Yeah, it must be really rewarding. And it must be really <laughs> lovely to, in such a short period of time, actually be employing someone full time as well. Yeah, Maybe. it is. I mean, yeah, that was that was a really big deal at the beginning. I um I didn't I thought that was what other businesses did. But yeah, I just got to a point where I realized that I couldn't I couldn't handle couldn't there wasn't enough hours in the day and I needed help. And um and it's really hard at the beginning to kind of relinquish what you, it's like you, you feel like you own everything and it's hard to let it go but you kind of realize that you you have to you know obviously is, there's some things you'll always um uh kind of be in, in charge of but um yeah the more help you can get the better definitely i think yeah playing like allowing people to um um people other people have skills that you don't have skills in those areas and, and the more you can get help with that the better I think I think so yeah, go, yeah in, the, in the future I'd, I'd like to have more people helping me <laughs> so yeah. and it must be nice as well because it can be a bit lonely um being in the studio on your own to actually yeah. work with someone else all the time yeah it is great yeah it is nice having someone to um yeah having someone to talk to about a particular project you're not if you're something's going really well to share kind of the joy or if something's going really badly to uh, almost like a shoulder to cry on <laughs> which is great um but yeah also I've kind of been lucky in that I've always rented space in in shared workshops there's always been that um kind of uh camaraderie of other similar people under the same roof which is which is another really lovely thing about it yeah that's really um, nice. Kind of keeps you going. Otherwise, you can feel quite isolated. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I imagine kind of being stuck in a workshop by yourself is kind of a really lovely romantic idea, and some people do love it. But yeah, I definitely like having people around. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> um, and as as you were part of Hot House, um, and we're kind of putting this out to people that are going to be on a similar program. Um, I wondered kind of on reflection, what um, aspects of Hot House you kind of really kind of go back to now or, or you really kind of think, wow, that was so helpful. Obviously there are lots of elements, <laughs> like you say, like that make you very uncomfortable, like talking in public and um, things that make us really don't like, like finances and that kind of thing. Yeah. But <laughs> are you pleased you did it? <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so I'm so happy I did it. I was I was I was blown away that I got on. I didn't think I I yeah. When the email came through that said I've been accepted, I was just over the moon. Um, because I really admired all the furniture makers that I followed that had been on it previously. 
I just didn't know if I was at that level or not. So yeah, it was so exciting to be selected. Um, but yeah, it was so good for so many reasons, just to, um, just to kind of um, meet a really amazing kind of group of um, peers and colleagues, uh, even though everyone's practice is very different. Uh, we all kind of share the same challenges and, and um, things that we need to do. Um, so yeah, kind of creating that network of people was, was amazing. And just realizing that um, to help your business succeed, you need to, you really need to talk about it and promote it and, and be confident in doing that because it's so easy. And I think it's probably a, probably a personality trait of a lot of makers is just to be quite reclusive and focused on, on what you're doing in behind the bench. Um, whereas actually we need to be really out there kind of talking confidently about our work. And that was, and we were kind of forced to do that on Hot House as uncomfortable as it was at times, but it, it, it kind of makes you, you're, you're, you're the only one that's gonna, no one else can promote your business like you and you've got to be good at doing it. And it's still something I'm working on now, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, so kind of the, the kind of being persuaded to talk about your business and um, describing it in a way that is gonna make other people really engage with it. Um, yeah so many great things and yeah obviously the finance was good and uh, uh just being part of a team and the, the craft council were awesome and yeah it was all having it's all good yeah i'd go back on it again if i could <laughs> you don't need to <laughs> yeah. you're there no i think that's so true about the talking though because um like you say so many makers really don't naturally um want to and, and i guess it is a lot about kind of being in isolation and having very personal ideas you're yeah. very personal to you but you can have the most wonderful, beautiful work. But if you're out at a show and you don't, and you can't kind of convey it um, to potential buyers, then it, it's doing yourself a disservice, isn't it? So it's kind of just getting yeah. out of that hurdle. It absolutely is, yeah. And it's it's almost. Um, I, I think of some friends that I have who kind of run different types of businesses, who are so good at promoting their business. <laughs> And um, I often think if, if they were to come and try and do what they do with my business, it would, it would, it would grow more quickly. And so just being able to have that self-confidence and just, just kind of really bigging up yourself and your business is so important. So, yeah, but it, yeah, it doesn't come naturally. So, yeah. It doesn't, but you have to. So, yeah, I think a good message is like, don't, don't be afraid and, you know, your work's good. Just, just shout about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, last of all, just a very general one. You, you gave some amazing tips already anyway. Um, but if you could kind of give one tip to emerging makers kind of starting out on their journey at the moment, then what, what tip would you give them? I, I think, yeah, I think for me, um, it was the first one on, on my list, actually. It's, um, it's images. I mean, there's loads of things, but I think for me, um, I feel like if you haven't got um, decent images of your work, professional images that kind of show it to its, to, that, that re represent it as good as it looks in real life, um, you're kind of holding yourself back a little bit. Um, yeah, because I, I, I was, I was kind of fortunate that and I, a, a friend of my girlfriend's actually was a is a photographer and he was able to do some initial photography for me. Um, we just hired a, a small little venue in Bristol. And um, I feel like those photos um, really helped. I started seeing those images in a few places because they were good images. And I really feel like you, you need those images. They're like, they're sort of the main tool in your toolkit at the very beginning. You need to show people your work and it needs to, it needs to look professional because your work, uh, you just have, the image just has to catch you and, and that's going to be such a help because we were kind of we were bombarded with images now aren't we? And we just you only get a few seconds to make that impact so i think having that uh, on a website and or on social media is is so important at the beginning because people are gonna take notes um i think without it it's you're not really getting you're not really getting all our work is so it's kind of visual that it just needs yeah. to be seen by people. So I think my my main tip would be do a photo shoot as soon as you can, as soon as you're in a position to 
as soon as you've got some work uh, that you're happy with and uh, get it photographed and just try and get it on your website or on social media or yeah and, and just get eyes on basically I think yeah because yeah. I think at the beginning you can kind of feel like you're splashing out money all of the time to no return but it really is kind of prioritizing the things that are really important and like you say photography is so important because yeah. that's all people will see especially at the moment when everything's kind of digital um, yeah. and people are spending so much time staring at their phones and scrolling through yeah. you need to stand out and if you don't look professional then um yeah. you know you again you're not doing yourself justice so yeah yeah and and it is a it's a horribly expensive cost at the, the beginning when you've got no money it just it's like it seems like the antithesis of what you you should be doing but it's kind of you're sort of speculating to accumulate i guess but just without them you're you're going to hold yourself back a bit that's what i that's what i think yeah, yeah and they're the ones that you'd use for apply for all of these opportunities and shows and that kind of mm -hmm. thing and they could be the difference between being accepted and not being accepted so absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah definitely fantastic mm -hmm. great tip and um yeah fantastic presentation it's just so nice to see you back again and um see how far you've come and it's amazing you're doing so well um, yeah, it's a steady like it's um it's it's a steady it's a steady rise i always look back and think uh it's taken a long time because you kind of hear businesses that you hear kind of advice that it's two to three years of before a business starts really performing and it's I feel like well it's taken me two to three times that length of time but um when I sort of look back I'm always further ahead than I was I'm always getting further ahead so it's it is growing it's just kind of a slow slow growth but it's a slow steady growth I guess so yeah yeah no I think it's, it's brilliant and you know we're creative businesses it is it is a long time yeah to actually be able to employ someone and to have work that you're kind of quite scared of because you've got so much then yeah, that's a pretty yeah. good place to be <laughs> yeah 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 it is yeah, yeah. Being, being comfortable with being uncomfortable that's I have to keep telling myself that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Being> comfortable. <laughs> Yeah. oh fantastic well thank you so much i'll um i'll let you go um and i'll stop recording now but um thank you again and good luck with everything in the future thank you very much my pleasure i really enjoyed doing it thanks Rosie. <laughs> thank you bye all right bye